Hey what's up guys so in this video I'm going to show you how you can create an hoggy style pattern inside affinity designer now this is going to be super easy and it can give you a repeating patterns a unique and uh, interesting look now if you don't know what an hoggy pattern is just search for images and you will find this kind of results and you can see that then hoggy pattern is kind of like have this an s shape curved here these kind of styles and uh, you can use these images and this kind of results for your inspiration as well so this is the goal of today's tutorial so guys here inside affinity designer i'm going to create a new document and i'm going to use a square form here you do not have to use a square form you can use a rectangular form as well but i prefer to work in square form when i'm creating repeating patterns I have chosen the units to be in points you can use whatever you want and just press create now as you can see that i have created this document in 1200 and 1200 points now i want to make sure that whatever the shape i am creating is going to be kind of like uh, can help me divide this 1200 so for example i'm going to first create a rectangle shape actually a square shape and i want it to be kind of like uh you know have it to be divi 1200 to be divisible by this so i'm going to put here let's say 300 and 300 to be width and the height and then i'm align it at the center like that so make sure whatever the document size is and uh, you should choose that size which you can easily divide and multiply and it can uh, you know can help you in creating this process if it's easy for you to do the math so i have created a 300 by 300 square form then i'm just going to remove any kind of fill color and have it some kind of stroke color so i can just see it here next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to create that s curve so in order to make that s curve to be a perfect one i'm going to use an ellipse tool so I'm just going to create a circular shape here and uh, just place it at this location and as soon as it touches its edges and I can see that now it has you know the center point is just at this corner I'm just going to leave it by the way if you want to have it uh, snapped like me and uh, you need to just have these options checked in this snapping toolbars all right now i'm just going to create a vertical and horizontal line using the pen tool in the mode i'm going to choose this line mode and i'm just going to create a vertical line and then a horizontal line then i'm just going to align them at the center like that and now i'm going to select this ellipse tool or actually ellipse shape or the circular shape and then i'm just going to scale it up by pressing the shift key and as soon as it touches it and it snaps at this point i'm just going to release it same thing i'm going to do with this one as it as it touches this one i'm going to release it then i'm just going to align it again so that it is perfectly at the center and maybe like that as well you might have to you know make sure that it touches again so you need to uh, you can press shift and control key to you know just scale it from the center rather than scaling it from the edges and you can see in the transform panel we have 300 by 300 width as well and that is is kind of like showing you that our shape is perfect like that the next thing that i'm going to do is just convert this one into a pie shape at the top like that and then decrease this start angle and actually increase it and make it 180 like that so that it is horizontal like that and in the total angle i'm just going to decrease it to 90 to make it perfect like the or you can just put 90 here and enter and this way you can create it like that now i'm going to hide these vertical and horizontal lines that i had created and then I'm just going to select this pie shape and make sure that it is at this location on this corner. I'm just going to press Ctrl J to copy it and move it down like that in this location. And then just rotate it like that. 
so that we can get this S shape that we wanted. So as soon as it snaps and you get these highlight lines in you know green and red color, you are just going to release it. Now I'm just going to hide this background rectangle shape and then I'm going to select both of these pie shapes and then convert them into curves. Now I'm going to use this node tool and select this node this point here and at the top I'm just going to use this action that is called break curve so once that curve is broken I'm just going to delete this point and then I'm just going to delete this point as well same thing I'm going to do with this S shape I'm going to select this point break the curve just move it on the side and then delete it and then delete this point as well now I'm going to select both of these curves and then you know select this point that is common between these and then at the top in the actions I'm just going to use this option join curve you should not use this close curve option because if you use this close curve option you will get a weird shape so instead of that you should use this option join curves and now your curve is joined the next thing that I'm going to do is just press ctrl J to copy it flip it horizontally and then move it on this location and as soon as it snaps I'm just going to release it use the node tool again select the both of these curves and at the top I'm just going to select this point and at the top in the action I'm going to join these curves as well next thing I'm going to do is just press ctrl J to copy it again flip it vertically and then move it down like that now I'm going to do is just you know align them horizontally let me just select this one align it horizontally select this one and align it horizontally all right and then I'm going to make sure that it snaps like that all right and then I'm going to select both of these curves select this point and then join them and then move this point so that I make sure that I have not accidentally created two points let me just undo it and on this point again I'm select both of these actually it's now a single curve so I'm just going to go select this point and at the top I'm just going to join it and now I have this perfect August style S curve like that now at the bottom I have this rectangle shape which I do not want and you can keep it if you want it but now I'll just just hide this for a moment now that I have this S curve or the Augie curve of shapes uh, created, now it's time to create some patterns inside it. But before I do that, uh, let me just show you how you can tile these. So before I go and tile these, I'm going to go into the symbols tab and I'm going to create a symbol from this shape so that whatever I create inside this shape it is repeated in all the uh, areas. So after selecting this curve I'm just going to press create and it has now created a symbol. I'm just going to press ctrl J to copy it and then move it like that and as soon as it snaps at this point like that I'm just going to release it and then press ctrl J again to copy it. So it has automatically placed our shape in this perfect position and in this perfect location. And the next thing that I'm going to do is select both of these, press Ctrl J to copy these and then move them like that. And as soon as they snap, I'm just going to release it, select this one, press Ctrl J to copy it and then place it at this location and as soon as it snaps, I'm just going to release it. Then I'm going to select all of these top three layers, this one. You know three top and the bottom two press ctrl j to copy these and then move them down like that you know it just snaps right there i'm just going to release it i have duplicated here at the center so i'm just going to delete it and then the next thing i'm going to do is select this one and this one press ctrl j to copy it and then move them down like that and as soon as they snap i'm just going to release those okay now that our repeating tile or template has created now it's time to just create the pattern so you can select any of the symbols here so i'm just going to select this center one here and then i'm going to create uh, some random shapes inside it 
so i'm going to select this curve and start creating my design elements So guys our design is ready and now I'm just going to show you how you can change the background color and uh, you don't have to create this kind of abstract design you can use anything in it you can import any kind of other already present or already created design element in it and it will be repeated automatically so let me just show you how you can create the background color so I'm just going to select this rectangle shape that I initially created change its size to the document size so 1200 by 1200 and then simply align it at the center like that and change its fill color to whatever color you want I'm choosing black at this moment and I'm just removing any kind of stroke color and stroke width from it so now I have this beautiful pattern and by the way if you do not like this black line that we initially created if you want to remove it you simply need to hide that curve in any of the symbols and it will be automatically removed from the rest of them and this is how you can easily create this August style pattern inside Affinity Designer and uh, you can export it in the form of PNG JPEG and use it in your designs or print on demand products. Let's towards the end of this video let me show you how you can import an already created element in it and it will be repeated uh, across all of these uh, shapes that I created. So I'm just going to select all of these shapes that I created group them together and then hide them for a moment and then i'm going to open up an already created element so guys this was the unicorn pattern that i created previously on this channel and i'm just going to select this group copy it press ctrl v to paste it and then scale it down a bit like that and then you can see that it is already repeated in all of these design elements that i have already created and if you want to import some other elements for example like this you can import them as well and create some interesting look for your designs like that we just put it here maybe scale it down so it totally depends upon you what kind of pattern and style you want and uh, you can import your already created elements as well to create some unique looking designs that are slightly different from those regular patterns so guys hopefully you have found this video to be helpful and uh, useful if you have any questions regarding this video or any of my previous videos you can ask me in the comments below and i'll be happy to answer those if i can and hopefully i'll see you in the next video and thank you for watching